Hey everyone, I wanted to make this quick uh, Lightroom slash Photoshop um, tutorial based off of an epiphany I recently had while editing this photo from uh, Acadia National Park. This is a location called Jordan Pond. If you're ever in Bangor, Maine, uh, definitely want to check this out. It's a, it's a glorious scene. But as I was editing this photo and kind of going through my normal workflow of, uh, you know, vibrancy, saturation, or sharpening, and luminosity mass, and white points and black points, I, I found myself spending a lot of time editing this photo. I think I spent probably twice as much time on this photo as I do most photos, but I wasn't working on the coloring aspect of it all. I was really working on just the overall composition of the photo, which uh, kind of got me thinking that I don't do this enough. I don't, I don't put a focus on my editing workflow on composition as much as I should. And in my opinion, that's got to be one of the, if not the most important part of the image is the overall composition itself. So why are we not or why am I not putting uh, increased focus on that with my editing technique? So it's something that I learned while going through this image and it's something that I'm definitely gonna apply to uh, or try and stay focused on on images moving forward. And and what I mean by that, let me go to the, the original photo. This is raw, straight out of camera. And you, as you can tell, if I compare it to the finished product, the original was a little bit more chaotic. There's a lot of additional stones here, and um, it, it just it doesn't look quite as clean as the final image. So, as I was working on this, I started to think about it, and I was t asking myself, I was like, you know what, self, <laughs> what do you what do you like about the photo? Why did you take it in the first place, and what's the composition? So. I kind of was thinking about that, and to me personally, you know, the, I took the, the the photo, of course, because I was there to shoot the sunset, and here's the sunset, and then I naturally travels to the brightest part of an image, so this is ultimately the, the, the main focal point is the setting sun. I also like the reflection of the mountains, or the hills, just depending on where you're from, in the water because that acted as a leading line that kind of drew your eye into the main focal area of the image and it was also on each side as well here's the um, a leading line from the shadow from this hill so there's really good left to right symmetry in both lines converge in the central area here where the sun's setting and is also the brightest part of the image so i really like that about the image but I also like the fact that there's also re the reflections in the water kind of take your eye to the center part too. So there's a lot of things working together to ultimately drag the viewer's eye to this area here, which is the setting sun. So the composition for me really worked. So that's that was the main composition. That's what I liked the most about it. There was a couple other elements I liked. I liked the red in the, the clouds and the sky, and I also liked the way that it was the red was reflecting in the water as well. That was the second component. And then the third component of the image that I really enjoyed was the stones in the foreground. So the here's the original image. The, the stones that kind of walk the eye into the final photo. I love that because, you know, if, if the stones weren't here and there was really no foreground, when you look up at the image, your eye would immediately go to the brightest part of the image. You can see it better in the final image your eye would immediately be drawn there, and then that would be it, the image is done. So this right here takes the viewer's eye on a, on a short but somewhat of a journey, stepping their way through the image. This makes sure that the viewer sees the foreground, will see the midground, and also see the background, so they will see the entire image in its entirety, which is ultimately what we're trying to do. So, um, from a compositional perspective, for me personally, this image really worked. And I wanted to emphasize that as well, because when you looked at the raw image, it, your eye, it gets kind of lost. So what I did is, you know, of course, I always start everything off with Lightroom and just made real basic edits, updated the white point, the black point, and um, you know, update highlights and shadows and just real basic stuff. And then I put it into Photoshop. And this is where I really wanted to, to kind of clean up the composition and really enhance it. So um, the first thing, uh, this is actually a focus stacked image because um, I have items uh, or interest in the immediate foreground here. And I also want to make sure that not only is this super sharp, but also the background is as sharp as possible. So I believe I took four, I think there's four images in this stack. I focused 
on this stone, this stone, this stone, and then the mountain in the background, and then stacked everything together. If, uh, if you're not familiar with focus stacking, I actually created a video on this uh, a couple months ago, which I'll link in the top of this video now. And so if you're interested in that, check that out as well. But you know, once I stacked everything together, I wanted to, to clean up the composition because as you can see in the final image, very clean through here, not a lot of distractions. And then here, you see a lot of distractions. So what I did is I went to the, the patch tool. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is a great tool to get comfortable with. You just simply circle whatever you want to remove. Make sure you leave a little bit of room around it. Don't get super tight around what you're trying to uh, eliminate. And what you want to do is come up to the top and go to edit. Try to get edit, fill. And it makes sure content is selected at content aware, blending mode set to normal and opacity at 100% and watch the magic. It's magic, there it is, works great. Um, I use this all the time. Let's remove a couple more. So I was really just kind of going through and thinking to myself, what A doesn't add anything to the composition, what B takes away from the composition and what is C, what's distracting to me. So those are the, that's that was kind of the, the thought process I was going through as I was cleaning up this image. So um, I won't go through the whole entire thing, but I, I went through and, and just kind of tidied up a lot of these uh, loose stones and then there was a couple of little wire grass. Let me try that one again here. Wire grass that was uh, sticking up that just like I said, didn't add anything to the composition. So once I, um, you know, kind of tidied that up, and because I really wanted to create a, a nice smooth runway from here to here, leading to the uh, the major focal point, and then so I'm, I'm kind of searching for distractions at this point, and um, I noticed the the trees sticking out of the ridge line. You know, this side of the ridge is nice and smooth, and along here, and then all of a sudden you have these trees sticking up. So that I found very distracting. So once again, we want to remove those. We're using the other uh, patch tool, edit, try to again, edit, fill, kind of aware, okay. And um, of course I'm going much quicker for the video, but you, you get the general idea and, and the patch tool is great for removing distractions and I, I use it all the time. So I went ahead and cleaned up the entire image to where it looks like this. So you can see that the ridge line is on this side is just as smooth as the center and the right side. And a lot of these loose stones and everything that wasn't really adding to the composition is removed. And now you have this nice kind of like upside down V here with the stones and then you have the reflection leading your eye to the center point. You also have the reflection of the mountainside on each side drawing your eye in here. So the entire composition is drawing the eye to this area, which is the brightest point, which is perfect for this image. Now, the second thing I wanted to do was I really like the red in the clouds and the red reflecting in the water. So I really wanted to enhance that because you can see it well here, but in the original image, it's a little washed out. So what I did is I created an adjustment layer and made a curved layer. And then I came up here to the RGB channel, red, green, blue and I drop that down and I selected red only. And then I drag this up and as you can see, the farther I drag up into the left, the more it increases the red tones. Now, if I bring it down into the right, that's gonna actually suck a lot of the red out and makes it more green. So I added just a little bit of the red to it and I wanted to go a little bit overboard and I wanted to bring it back using the opacity of this actual layer here. And if I toggle this on and off, you can see this subtle change that it just adds in. And it just, it just makes that red really pop, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Now, if, there, if the red is applied to areas that you don't want it to, so like if you look at the stone here as I toggle the effect on or off, you can see some of the, the red was applied there as well. It's really simple to remove this. Just simply click on the layer mask, make sure black is highlighted, select a brush. Where are you brush tool? There you are. We'll select a soft brush, make sure opacity and flow are high. And then we're gonna simply just paint black on here. And you can see how the red effect is instantly removed. And if you come up to the layer mask here, you actually see a black area. Remember, black conceals, white reveals. So um, 
the, the black is now covering up the red treatment there. So if I toggle it on or off, you'll notice that the red, the red in the rock is no longer there. So, and then here's the final image there. So, you know, I, I, I cleaned up the composition. I took out the trees on the ridge line. I removed the unnecessary stones. I added a little bit more redness to the image. So the composition is really starting to work for me or kind of become a little bit more clear. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is um, I finished this up in Lightroom. So let me go over here to Lightroom. And I like to do a lot of dodging and burning or local adjustments in Lightroom. I think it's got fantastic tools for that. But I really wanted to emphasize my main focal area, which is the setting sun. And I really wanted to make that already bright part of the image more bright. And I also wanted to add a little bit more of a sunset-ish tone, if you will, because it was kind of just a little bit white. And I want to make it more yellow and warm. So I went up here to the radio filter and I clicked, created a um, kind of a radius around it. Added a little bit of yellow here, added a little bit of magenta, increased the exposure about half a stop and added some contrast and took out a little bit of highlights and added a little bit clarity as well. You know, whenever I really move exposure up or down, whether darkening or, or making it brighter, I always like to add a little bit of clarity back in. But I ultimately, and I'll toggle this on or off, the purpose here was really just to, to leave no doubt what the, the main focal area was. So when I turn it on, whoops, let me close this so it takes away the, the red identifier. So, okay, here it is on and here it is off. On and off. So it makes a big difference in some of the details of how exactly I did that. Whenever you, whenever I like to I use radio filters to kind of increase the, you know, the look of a setting sun or a rising sun, I, I do a similar treatment as this right here. And always want to make sure I crank the feather all the way up to 100. And what that means, if I bring it down to, say, zero feather, you'll notice that it's a, uh, you know, let me hit done here and you can see the difference that it leaves like this hard edge, which doesn't look natural whatsoever. So I always leave it as 100 to kind of create a real nice fade effect there. And something else cool is with, since the new Lightroom update, you actually have the ability now with um, in local adjustments, whether it's the radial filter or the brush or gradients, to do uh, range masks. And you have a couple options. You can do a color range mask or a luminance range mask. So what I did is color. And when you select color, you get this little like water dropper looking thing. Click it, you can drag it over and you just click and you drag on an area and it's gonna take a color sample of that area. Let me do it right here actually. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to kind of increase the color that's already naturally occurring a little bit more. So it's not just a blanket yellow or a blanket magenta you can actually create more refined coloring effects, which is really cool. And then um, put that back there. And then you can just kind of dictate how much of that color that you specified you want to apply to the image. So this is just gonna apply that, like I said, already naturally occurring warm yellowish orange color in the highlights to those clouds. So it kind of gives it a, a really good natural effect. And I like that. So let me just close it. And I'll toggle the effect on and off again so you can see it real quick. So that worked out well. And then the final thing was I really wanted to just do a little bit of dodging and burning just to kind of emphasize um, the composition as well. I felt that I think, you know, that the, the stones in the foreground are really critical to walk the viewer's eye into the image. And I want to make sure that they're not kind of lost in translation. So I wanted to kind of increase the exposure a little bit here. So. I created a new adjustment brush, exposure, kind of bring that up just a, a little bit at the medium size brush. And then you just kind of simply just paint some of the exposure on there. Let me uh, hit show selected mask overlay so you can see exactly where I'm painting. And this is just gonna make sure that the stones are bright enough to catch the viewer's eye and just make sure that they are focused on that as they're looking at the image. And I will toggle that on and off so you can see what that did. And once again, it's subtle. Subtle is really the name of the game. And it is just enough to bring out the detail there. Or not the detail, but just kind of emphasize that, hey viewer, check out this path that I've laid out there for you to walk into the image. So 
those are just a uh, very little subtle things i also did a, a similar technique except i kind of darkened this area through here because i didn't want a lot of the the rock showing because that's really not part of the composition so i kind of darkened that a little bit so ultimately i brighten the areas i want you to see and kind of darken the areas that i don't really want you to focus on too much so you know i learned a lot while focusing or while editing this photo. If I go back to the finished product here and um, just kind of made me realize that I need to focus a little bit more on composition and um, when I'm going through my post-processing workflow. So uh, I hope you found the, the video uh, interesting. Hopefully you were able to get something out of it. Um, if you enjoyed the video or the content, uh, definitely if you could give me a thumbs up and if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.